program I was supposed to present, I'm not going to present. We have, uh, the good news is, uh, if you remember, we, at the end of his presentation, he, uh, he proposed a game, and he gave uh, sets of cars to different teams to work on to see what kind, what kind of an what kind of a platform business model makes sense for peer-to-peer -peer electricity trading. We have two teams, they have made their slides, and we also have a price here, a bubble that's, so we kept his word. Uh, I don't want to use the group's team. You have 10 minutes to present, and you have five minutes of discussion and, uh, and questions. Uh, we decided to have a jury here, uh, Thank you, uh, Mustafa, Gert, and Wim, to be our jury. Uh, the floor is yours. Great, thanks. Um, so we will be uh, first to present our incredibly innovative and uh, yeah, we think new kind of peer-to-peer -peer energy trading platform. We think it will provide a lot of value to uh, consumers, consumers, and uh, also uh, DSOs. DSOs. Um, so. Yeah, we use the cards provided, and uh, we will go through the different uh, levels of our business model. Um, but yeah, we used a few combinations of cards, since there were so many good options in there that uh, um, we, we made some combinations. But the, the broad overview is we were making a, a, a platform to aggregate energy demand and supply that also provides complementary uh, uh, services to DSOs and TSOs. Um, we're using a dynamic pricing uh, model. Um, with revenue sharing system to monetize our platform and uh, uh, to scale up, we want to capitalize on energy cooperatives and pre existing communities um, that are already locally established. And uh, to manage our platform, we want to uh, really work together with the regulator because it's very important in the electricity sector and um, uh, to co innovate uh, uh, with these uh, incumbent parties. So, here we go. Okay. Yes, so for the design part, we decided to go with the aggregator model, where we would aggregate the demand and supply on one platform. And you can imagine this platform like having two levels. On the first level, the peers can trade with each other. And the demand that is for supply that is not uh, uh, met. So if you have oversupply or, 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 or demand, we have a second level where this platform is connected to the wholesale market where we can then buy um, the amount of electricity we need to, to, to meet the demand on the level one, the peer to peer level. But we also have uh, another card as a complementary ecosystem where we can then pool these peers, the, the, the whole demand and supply we have at the platform, and we can provide additional services to the DSOs but also potentially to TSO uh, infusion. Okay, well, so for the, the monetization of the platform, uh, we went with uh, dynamic pricing and revenue sharing. We saw that dynamic pricing would be very good uh, in our case because energy prices are already dynamic and the stock market price are some kind of upper cap on the price that we will be able to give in our platform. And furthermore, we could also have dynamic pricing in the platform depending on demand and offer level at each time. Also, those, those prices would be uh, influenced by the, uh, the needs of the TSO if there is congestion uh, at some point, we will have a higher price. So the, the system doesn't get totally congested. And then for revenue sharing, if we give ancillary services for the DSO or for the TSO, there will be some revenue that will be generated by, by this. And we will share it with all the customers and the members of the platform. But we also will have the opportunity to keep a little part of this revenue. Yes, and to uh, scale up, we want to uh, really connect to already um, existing communities and people that are kind of forerunners in this energy uh, transition, um, because these will be the most likely people to really engage on this kind of platform and to be open to new kind of innovative uh, tariffs and, and kind of different uh, uh, ways of, of doing things with energy. Um, and also, if we start with 
kind of locally well-established communities, um, uh, there is more potential for um, coming up with, with services for the DSO because um, in a local area where there are multiple people together on, on a grid, on a local grid, um, um, then it's easier to solve congestion problems rather than everyone spread out across the, the country. Um, and we uh, get a big shot, so we want to aim for energy cooperatives because there are already a lot of energy cooperatives in some countries like the Netherlands and they now have to sell all their surplus energy to, um, uh, for low feed-in tariffs so they're, they're potentially missing out on a lot of revenue compared to if they were using our platform. So if we were to get all of these cooperatives on our platform to offer their surplus uh, energy demand, um, that would attract a lot of uh, consumers to, to buy this energy for cheaper than, than the retail market. Um, so this is, this is how we would uh, uh, like to scale up. Okay, and now for the longer term management of the platform, we have a lot of opportunities. If our platform grows bigger and bigger, bigger we can begin to discuss with the regulators in the energy system uh, sector because we will be able to provide plenty of new services to both the consumers, prosumers, and uh, regulators. And maybe if we have a, 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 a big enough weight on the, the market, we'll be able to change the regulation so that we can provide even better services. And also, we will be open for co-innovation because those new services will be able to recommend them uh, one after the other. And also, for the, for the consumer directly, we will be able to learn about their uh, behaviors and to adapt to their behavior. Maybe we can provide them with some toolkits for uh, flexible demand response and other, other ancillary services like that. So, this is our long-term vision of our platform. So, thank you for your attention and your location. Thank you very much. Uh, we were very on time, thank you for that. Uh, let's open the floor first for the jury. If you have questions, we have about five to six minutes of comments. Probably I missed it, but I didn't quite get who are the buyers and who are the sellers in your business model? Uh, it can be anyone, like just a single peer, uh, a consumer or a consumer can, can get into it. Or we can also, as Felix uh, said, uh, directly develop a partnership with local communities and treat them as a, as a single entity if they are already a uh, local market. Okay, and you also stressed at the beginning that you want to aggregate. Uh, so, what are the advantages of aggregating the, the demand or supply? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so, if we aggregate uh, these reserves and peers on one platform, we can then um, meet the demand on the platform. So, so we, we, we can match the, 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 the suppliers with, uh, with the consumers. And we also have this conversion at the wholesale market. So any access that we cannot uh, meet on the platform, we can, we can import from the wholesale market. Okay, yeah, okay. So that leads to my next question. So yeah, you mentioned that whatever it's not meet locally, from your buyers or from the sellers, you go to the wholesale market and you buy the difference. Is this um, platform's uh, responsibility to, to meet the, um, the extra demand or supply that you need to match the current supply demand? Um, yeah, I think this. If we do it by doing it this way, we can have like the, the legal status of uh, just an electricity supplier. And, um, and then our customers would only have to use our platform for their total energy demand. So otherwise they would have to, you know, if there would be no demand on our platform, there would, wouldn't be a matching, then they would have to use a second supplier. Um, but we, want, we don't want, we, yeah, we want to do everything on our platform. So um, 
yeah, if we provide them that, that extra service, uh, uh, they will stay with us. All right, final question. So you could trade energy, you would also trade flexibility. So in your case, do you trade one or the other or both? Um, I think our main model is uh, electricity, but I think for when it comes to flexibility, this is something we can explore um, with the DSO. Maybe that's also the kind of yeah, we want to explore with the Go innovation and the kind of complementary ecosystem with the, the grid operators because they can benefit from, from this kind of uh, flexibility trading when it comes to congestion and, and things like that. So that's something we want to explore. Perfect. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Also from my side, uh, three questions. First one is, this is about the business model. Where do you get the money from to run your platform? I didn't hear that. Service for, for the, uh, the service, so we, we set a very dynamic pricing. So, depending on the price on our platform, we take a little bit of every tra transaction. So, we are pushed to have a maximum uh, volume of uh, transactions. So, you will have a kind of fixed fee per transaction independent of how much how much you are trading? Uh, or it would be a percentage fee. Percentage, yeah. And also, in revenue sharing, it's more for the flexibility offer. If we have some revenue due to the flexibility, we sell. We say, okay, you are responsible for that, but we can also take a share for ourselves because we aggregated everything. And, uh, Any idea about the share between how much goes to the customers, uh, seller, buyers versus the no, platform? This is, this is the first step of our business model. Let's think about it. Second, second question. Um, in your design, if I got it right, you have somewhere price setting <clears throat> higher than the feed-in tariff and lower than the retail pricing. Don't you think that there will be in the community always either a surplus or a shortage? So you will always be at one of those two limits. Uh, and so there's no real benefit with respect to uh, just the main grid. That's a complex question. Will you be able to make money with this type of thing? Uh, if the sun is shining, the sun will be shining for everybody, so there will be surplus for everybody. So there will be nobody willing to buy, so everybody gets a feed-in uh, tariff anyhow. Otherwise, uh, if there's a shortage for everybody, uh, market will go to the retail pricing as well. So. Yeah, maybe, I mean, that's, that makes a lot of sense, so if, if, yeah, it, it's unlikely that, that naturally there will be a, a matching of supply and demand, but maybe this kind of um, platform can incentivize flexibility as well, so it would incentivize um, people to um, really uh, buy energy when, when the demand is, or when the supply is higher, or when the other way around, right? Like when when the, 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 the demand is high, globally speaking, um, People will be incentivized to sell energy, and when the supply is high, people will be incentivized to buy energy. Um, but more than could, without our platform, because um, yeah, they're they're making more money. Uh, they could have a battery and do it for themselves as well without having the platform. Right, but then they would have to um, use the, the feed-in tariffs, right? Or they like they would be less incentivized. And third question: If you want to scale up and you uh, are going to take cooperatives as big shops, don't you think you're going to bring to break into their business models and why would they really be willing to be yet a customer of a bigger thing? Um, so we think that um, like cooperatives they are already um, I think that the, I think the problem with the cooperatives right now is that they are having a lot of surplus but they have to sell it for the feeding tariffs to the grid so there's not any kind of smart matching or um, you know any kind of um, yeah, so, so we offer them the ability to sell their energy for higher price than the feed-in tariff. Um, that would be the incentive for them. Thank you. One quick question from my side, to stay in time. Uh, so what, what, what do you do to buy in the DSO because you have like a, this kind of congestion of services, right? So mm -hmm. I see there one positive element, but uh, normally the DSO probably has more complexity to, to handle when you have this P2P platforms, right? So, um, how can you buy in the DSO?
So because it's all based on voluntary collaboration, right? So you have to pull him in. So how are you going to seduce him? Right, right. Well, um, um, so don't you think that a congestion offering congestion service services uh, that would not be enough for? But I guess we are. Think so. I think so. And he may. Look, so the complexity is much larger than, as far as I understand, much larger than just the congestion issue. But if, if we manage to have a, a big amount of people joining our platform, we have a lot of weight. And if we incentivize everybody to have a lot of flexibility, we can uh, aim their flexibility at helping the DSO. And we can go hand in hand with the DSO and say, when do you need that? When do you need this service? And if the bigger we aggregate people, the bigger we the service we can provide, maybe. Develops, you can then have a real influence on the DSO and you can go on and on to do the best okay. for the system. Good, we have to move to the next one, I think. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your great presentation, and let's immediately switch to the second. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> uh, my name is David Dix, and together uh, with uh, Michael Interman from the Apple School, we have also done this exercise, which was quite exciting. Um, voila, that was a title slide. <laughs> we didn't uh, follow the legitimate uh, four or five persons group, but I guess that was a, a tactical decision from more goals, so <laughs> don't worry about that. So I will be doing quite, quite uh, for the value proposition and value flow. Uh, we say, okay, we do a B2B uh, support platform. We also chose to add asset sharing platform because that's actually basically also what's happening on this platform. As a mission, we say, okay, enable consumers to become prosumers, enable local distributed energy generators to sell their electricity to consumers uh, for an agreed price. Um, boom, boom, boom. So we are bringing together which uh, which parties we bring together: prosumers, consumers, DSOs, supplier, retailers, and uh, also the regulator, of course. What interactions do we see on this platform? Yeah, buyer and seller matching, very important. Um, production and consumption registration. This should help us afterwards for the settlement and billing on our platform. A very simple description of the value flow. Um, so, consumer will eventually remunerate our energy for energy consumed of the prosumer. Um, what is the current situation? Yeah, well, we all know the current situation uh, in our countries. Um, but more specific, I would like to add uh, generally accepted energy trading, trading platform does not exist yet. So, yeah, that's the situation. So we kind of have an advantage there, or not. It doesn't help us to go and look to other uh, platforms. Motivation, we know, reduced prices is, for some countries, maybe a big motivation. Uh, clean energy for everyone, that's kind of the motivation on a larger scale. And yeah, maybe stabilize network, but that's more, that's not a direct I think indirect motivation um, that will have to uh, present itself. Um, the contribution by the players, yeah, we have the DSOs for the Terra Grid, and we have prosumers uh, with their uh, distributed energy resources. Voilà. <laughs> value creation, um, we see two core value propositions where we create value, and that is that uh, well, we will be unlocking. <coughs> Uh, latent supply. Um, yeah, so I think that's clear. And also from the other group as well, aggregate demand and supply. Um, voilà. 
the operating model will be creating a like marketplace. Uh, we, there's a transaction process between our prosumers and consumers that is kind of standardized, automated, controlled, secured, private, and all those things. Uh, that's going to be very important. But it most the thing I want to mostly stress here is the standardized and automated aspects of this uh, <coughs> transaction process. All right. Um, and we also have an integration platform. We are integration integrating a lot of big stuff, like all those, all the, the energy resources from the prosumers. We have to integrate uh, some kind of secure marketplace into the platform, and we also have to uh, integrate an existing complex infrastructure. Voila. If you look at ownership, um, that's on two levels. Uh, we have a consortium, meaning yeah, you, you create a multi-owner platform um, where, and that's mostly mostly for the operational steering, uh, keeping the platform running, and that will be our validators. Validators can be governments, validators can be regulators, validators can be uh, DSOs, suppliers, retailers. We don't see the peers as validators. You have three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Sorry. Uh, and also peer-to-peer -peer community. It's a decentralized ownership. I think we all know what that means, and that's more for the functional steering. Um, a bit of a grassroots um, movement, I would say. Okay. Direct monetization. Um, the revenue is shared. So that's what we took for value capturing. Um, the revenue is shared in the energy trade between validators, the operators, the prosumers. And also, we will also see a direct monetization in platform maintenance um, and validation of the platform. Uh, I took as an example the Ethereum gas rewards um, if we think of blockchain. Okay, monetization tactics, dynamic pricing speaks for itself. We have to do a uh, matching, we have to create, um, yeah, we will have to be created, creating a price based on actual demand and supply. And as a potential monetization, we see uh, that we, we will be creating more awareness uh, in our peers through a real time energy market transparency that we create with the platform. And yeah, data monetization. Um, I'm not going to explain that, you can ask me afterwards. <laughs> How we will grow and manage the last slide, so I hope we can do this in one minute. Um, yeah, so a micro market, that's piece also for itself. We will start small, grow organically, show results, and facilitate onboarding uh, and easy adoption into other market, uh, micro markets. Leverage existing assets, that's clear. Uh, we will follow the rabbit was one of the cards. I think it's a strange thing, but I can, ex I can imagine existing infrastructure and in the beginning a minimal user and user impact. Of course, the ESO willingness to participate, it's mostly their assets. <laughs> um, and existing users will be incentivized to bring in new participants. Um, I know in Belgium this works very much. Monitor performance. Yeah, very important to track network effects uh, on both levels, on both levels in the market and in your uh, in your uh, energy network. Uh, maintain the network events uh, effects, so prevent fraud. I think this is very important. Protect data. You need to create a trust. And then I can make a little mention of blockchain. Um, defend the platform. Manage the regulators. That's the only way. Well, it's not the only way, but it's an important way to defend our platform. We need to get the manage, we need to get the regulators on our side, of course. Uh, innovate. How can we innovate? We improve the customer journey. Very simple. Um, there is a lot of functionality that can be added, and the quality, of course, as well. But to be filled in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, in your first slide, I think you mentioned that you will bring together consumers, prosumers, DSO suppliers, regulators. Um, so, do you have any 
plan to do that. <laughs> like, how do you convince the market to come together and to buy into, into your platform? Um, yeah, not a clear answer on that, but uh, I think in further in my slides, how will we grow? I think we, I said we we'll start small. Uh, every new actor, every new role into the platform will create a lot of questions, a lot of complexity. And I think, as with my IT background, we always try to start small. Try to go to for the, the well, the, the MVP, you see what I mean. So, uh, we can't forget about DSOs, we can definitely forget about supplier and retailers in the first phase. Uh, but in the first phase, we will really see to the prosumers, consumers, and then add complexity. We cannot take all the complexity at once, it will just break the platform. Okay, um, so my ne next question is about... So there, it's quite a big hype about these peer-to-peer -peer energy trading platforms. I assume uh, there will be more teams or more um, organizations kind of launching some startups, businesses. So compared to them, what is the unique selling point? What is the unique feature of your platform? Um, okay. Uh, yes, our unique selling point. I think at first I would say that we try to have a minimal incentivization uh, yeah, for the uh, other players as well. Uh, we, um, I think to this rewarding functionality or, uh, for validators, I think we can kind of incentivize uh, the bigger players that might lose. That's one unique selling point. Um, yeah, other unique selling points, <laughs> difficult. I think we will aim for, um, and that's not really mentioned, but I think we will aim for an open and transparent marketplace. Okay, and final question. You also mentioned asset sharing platform. So, what advantages does that bring compared to only having a peer to peer support platform? Um, okay, then maybe I might have misunderstood, but with the asset sharing platform, it is, well, you, you are connected to the platform, and okay, for example, the Uber, the Uber app. So, during the day, I'm riding my car for my work, for myself. After work, I don't need my car. And I have time. So I sell my time, I sell my car. I don't sell my car, but I sell my time mostly. Uh, and this is a bit of, it's, it's an asset, it's asset sharing. Uh, and this is a bit the same. So I'm on holiday. I don't need my solar panels. I don't have a battery. Uh, so I share this asset. For a price, of course. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, my first question was also about asset sharing, which was not clear, which is still not clear to me. Uh, <laughs> because you're not really sharing an asset to, to that perspective. You're just selling the energy from, is that correct? Or is there a kind of money for having a joint battery in an energy community, for instance, as a result of, it, of this? Ah, okay. So uh, with yes. asset sharing, I understood as kind of shared asset, multiple owners of this. Okay. Do, is that what you mean with that? No, no. Uh, actually I think from our side we mean actually asset sharing with only single owner. I share the excessive... It's not the service, it's the more the service that you're then sharing, more the energy in fact. Yes. So that's a bit yes. weird. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The second question uh, is about um, <coughs> value creation. How does unlocking this uh, latent supply create value? Um, you said this is clear, but that was not clear. Actually, you're shif shifting the value creation, all right? So my latent supply for my so solar panels... supply, you mean not? Wait. What do you, do you mean with latent supply? Supply I'm not, not using. Excess. Yes. No? So, okay, good. Yeah. See, uh, uh, latent for me is hidden so yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And hidden. Correct. So, actually, what happens today? Uh, 
the energy, the excessive energy I have. It goes back to the grid that goes back to the grid and it's hidden. hidden. I mean, no, it's not hidden, but it's I don't know what happens to it. So it, the DSO or someone else is going to be making money with this. With my supply, I don't see it. I, I don't know what's happening to it. And so we're actually unlocking that and shifting the value creation from person, the other party that is selling it, to the actual owner of the asset. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the third question, how does creation of awareness can capture value? <laughs> okay. Um, well, actually, uh, earlier today I also uh, heard this uh, discussion at the table and they say, okay, I follow this uh, smart meter thing on my app. Uh, honestly, I don't do this. I have a smart meter. I don't follow what's happening on my smart meter. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have to. If you do that, you are aware of what's happening in your house. Same with our, what, what's happening with your energy. Uh, same, same with this platform. <laughs> You're going to be looking, it, it's going to be um, automated in a sense. But you will be made more aware of what, oh, what is the pricing? What is the price I'm selling at? What is the price I'm buying at? You will be more aware at what time of the day. And, at that, and that's the point where you say, okay, oh, I see I'm paying a really high price at some point in the day. Why don't I make less use of my kitchen uh, appliances at that time or okay. something? And that is on the asset sharing or positive peer support? Example. The peer to peer support, I Thank would you. say. <laughs> a very quick question because we go over time. Mm -hmm. um, a very quick question. So, on monetization, you have something new there the data monetization. Uh, it looks interesting, but I want to know what, what kind of insights are you generating, right? And then who is interesting to buy that? Okay, so try a quick answer. You're, you're, gen you're creating a local energy market. A local energy community, but you will create a market on top of that. And I would expect, I'm not an expert in the, in the, in the field, but I would expect that creating a market with supply and demand might generate some interesting data. Yep. And, <laughs> and who will buy it? Who will buy it? Who, is who will buy it? I don't know. You don't know. Do you <laughs> okay. know who buys your data? Well, when browsing internet? I think we go over time, so we should stop it here. So we are back to the moment. Thank you very much. Please join me to thank you. <laughs> we will keep Joy about half an hour when the second person, the next presenter is presenting to decide which group was the winner and gets the ball. Okay. Good.